Hello, welcome back to the Appropriate Technology module. So in this video, I want to define appropriate technology and let, let you know what it is exactly. Uh, so actually, I'm right now sitting in a very great example of appropriate technology for our climate. Uh, like I said, we live in a cold climate, so we have this greenhouse uh, that's right all connected um, to our annual kitchen gardens and it's below freezing outside so uh, probably about 26 27 degrees Fahrenheit and in here it's 76 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in fact I still have pea shoots and spinach and arugula growing in here some carrots um, whereas the annual gardens outside are covered in snow and they've been covered in snow since about mid-October and here we are at the beginning of December um, so I have gained a huge amount of a growing season season um, by using this very appropriate technology for this site. So what is appropriate technology? Appropriate technology is the simplest solution to the problem at hand. Uh, what we're doing is we're trying to engineer ways in which to that are simple, um, that are effective, and that use local resources. Another way to look at appropriate technology is that it's human-centered and human-scaled. Right, again, we're using those small and slow solutions uh, from the permaculture principles. So it's human-centered and human-scaled. Uh, it's replicable and understandable, uh, so easily accessible for people. Uh, it uses locally available resources. Uh, it is labor-intensive. It might be labor-intensive, but it's energy-efficient. And then finally, it's environmentally sound. So let's talk a little bit more about some of those bullet points. So again, the human-centered, human-scaled. So think combine harvester versus a broad fork or a garden fork, right? Obviously, the garden fork, the broad fork is human-scaled. Um, and uh, again, accessibility or understandability combine versus broad fork or garden fork, right? Uh, you need a certain amount of expertise to run a big combine harvester, whereas it takes about two minutes to explain to somebody how to use a garden fork really well. Um, and it's also, again, let's talk about locally available resources. This gets back to your site analysis and assessment in permaculture, right? You want to use things that you either have on site or are easy to access uh, regionally. Um, and then again, uh, labor intensive but energy efficient. Think about uh, a straw bale house, building a straw bale house. Uh, though it takes a lot of labor, like for example, back in 2008, uh, we helped a friend of ours uh, build a straw bale house and they invited all sorts of people. So there were like 30 of us that did this sort of barn raising, straw bale house barn raising. Uh, so it took a lot of people, but we were mostly unskilled, right? Maybe there were a couple carpenters there uh, to do the framing, right? But the rest of it uh, was just unskilled labor, a bunch of friends coming together, creating community in the process, uh, and putting together uh, this house that by the end of the week we had a good portion of the house and the walls done. So again, a lot of labor involved, but community building happening at the same time, so stacking functions and permaculture, um, but a super, a super energy efficient house. Whereas you think about a conventional home, right, you need uh, fairly highly skilled labor uh, and contractors, it takes a lot of time and a lot more money. Um, so, and again, environmentally sound, uh, that idea that we are paying attention to that ethic and permaculture of earth care, um, that we don't want to be taking a lot of resources um, that we don't need and we're trying to, to lower our environmental impact. So appropriate technology, like I mentioned in the last video, uh, Gandhi was the, the father or is known as the father of appropriate technology uh, because he advocated for these village-based technologies that kept things in the local communities. But in fact, it was E.F. Schumacher with his book, Small is Beautiful, that really coined the term. He started by coining the term intermediate technology, and then it was later changed uh, to appropriate technology. 
And appropriate technology is often discussed in the context of developing nations. Uh, so in order to, so with regards to their economic development or health concerns. Uh, so we're thinking about, say, ceramic water filters, right, to deal with waterborne diseases or uh, pedal powered grain mills uh, to help people make that more um, uh, easy, right, or less labor intensive. Um, or we're talking about those solar light bulbs that are made from plastic bottles. Uh, so usually appropriate technology in the context of developing nations is about economic development or health uh, and improving the health and well-being of people there. Um, and the, the issue there is that our capital intensive technologies from industrialized nations don't really transfer well to developing nations where you have a lot less resources, especially in these small villages that are maybe not as accessible and don't have access to a lot of funds. Um, so you're looking at technology, again, that's appropriate for that site uh, rather than um, just a, a, a generic uh, type of technology for any village um, or any community. Um, so again, that's appropriate technology in the context of developing nations. But we use it a lot in the context of developed nations. And it's usually uh, in the context of us wanting to lower our ecological footprint, decrease our energy consumption. So a lot of it actually came out of the back to the land movement in the 70s. Uh, and then we've since kept on uh, doing these things because of people who want to live off grid, who want to practice more permaculture and more self-reliance. Um, so that's kind of the difference between appropriate technology in developed versus versus developing nations. Um, so, and, and in terms of an example of that would be, think passive solar homes, straw bale homes, rocket mass heaters, hay boxes, ways in which, uh, solutions in which we want to decrease our energy use. And so another thing also to realize about appropriate technology is that it's all about open source information. So this is accessible uh, and it's intended to be accessible to the public. So no behind closed doors patented information. All of this is open source and available for people who want it. So any lay person can go out there and read about how to build, say, a solar oven. Uh, and it's not too complicated. It's understandable. And the plans are out there and you don't have to pay for them. And you can go ahead and build your own solar oven. So again, open source information, nothing that you're necessarily having to pay for. Or there's no patent or copyright on any of it. And of course, appropriate technology is a huge field. It's a vast field. You could do a course, a two week course on appropriate technology alone. So again, like all of the modules in this permaculture design course, uh, you're really just touching the surface of this, this whole concept. So again, take these concepts, understand the, the overall idea about it, um, understand some of the examples that are out there, but know that you can delve deeper if you want to um, uh, after, the, after the design course. So that's what appropriate technology is. In the next video, I'm gonna uh, tie it back into um, appropriate technology in the context of permaculture design. Mm -hmm.